Hello there everyone, Robert here, and Wix Studio just recently released the ability to add WebGL effects natively to your Wix Studio site. So in today's video, I want to demo them out, also show you how to add them, go over some of the settings and some of the caveats or things that you might want to be aware of when you are going about setting this up. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and we'll jump right in. So as I mentioned, I actually want to start by demoing off the different WebGL effects that were added natively. I actually have a site and you'll see it a little bit later in the video as I'm going through and demoing it out. I'll probably have it there, but I much preferred this website that Sukumar Swain created. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I saw this shared in the new form community and I believe on LinkedIn as well. And he did a really good job of demoing all of them out here. So we can see there's different buttons. Again, we're on the liquify. Uh, WebGL effects. There's also noisy track, which you can see kind of kind of shakes out and adds noise to all of this. Slit scan, which auto plays, or again, we'll go over it in a bit. There are other settings you can kind of do with this, but you can see it's kind of creating a, like a wave effect. There's the RGB orb, which changes out the colors for this as an RGB effect, depending on where people are hovering. Ripples, which is kind of auto plays and an RGB split, which adds a kind of almost ripple-like effect as before, uh, but doing it with different colors as we're going through the site. So these are the features all linked the website below. So you can kind of play around with it, test it out, but let's actually go ahead and see how you can go about adding this to your site. So I'm here and I guess uh, just a little bit of information in regards to the WebGL effects. So the WebGL or Web Graphics Library, it's in JavaScript API. And with that, then you can use that to create 3D, 2D kind of effects on a website. Nice thing is that there's no plugins for this. So it is something that your browser just can run natively, assuming the browser has compatibility for it. But the nice thing about that then is it doesn't necessarily impact performance too much. Granted, if you have a lot of it, then maybe, but it is something that for the most part, your PC or MacBook or your computer, that your device is actually the one running these effects. With that mentioned, if you do want to add it currently, it does need to be a section that is taking advantage to this. As we can see on here, now that I've selected the section, we can see over here on animations and effects, there's an option for WebGL effects. This can only be done though, if there is media on the section. So you can see on here in the inspector panel, I don't have any images or videos added to it. Therefore, in the animations and effects, I don't have the option for WebGL effects. This is a little important as well, too, just because I have seen some users, what they actually do to kind of create an effect of having media in the background is they'll add either an image or video and they'll set this to, let's say, like 100% and 100% and let me just center this out. And again, you can see, cool, now it looks like I have a image on here. Uh, granted, I have max width set on for this section, but again, it's kind of creating that effect of, oh, this is occupying the section's background space. But even with this setup, I actually don't have the option for WebGL effects. I think this is available for everyone right now, but if you do stretch an image or a video, so long as it's actually the, its parent is the section, if you click on it, it should actually set it as the media background. And then in which case, if you do that, then you do have the option for WebGL effects. But with that mentioned, let's actually then go into the effects and check it out. Uh, again, one last little note, I guess, before jumping into the effects themselves. This does also work with videos. So if I have a video, I do have the option for WebGL effects there too. It should work as well with illustrations because those are images also. It doesn't work with GIFs from my understanding. Uh, I haven't tested it out because I haven't really been able to add on here, but like some of these things like the patterns, because these are just kind of images, they do work. Again, GIFs I think is one of the few that probably won't work. Or again, if you see this grayed out, yeah, if you have, I guess, the image background set up a, a specific way, you might not be able to see it that way. So again, here I have it set as a tile. Let me scale to fill. And I do have the option for that WebGL effect. So if you do see some things, uh, I'll link the support article that might go over a few things that I might not cover in the video here specifically, but just some things to note as well. If you do see that you don't have the ability for it, but yeah, let's actually check out then the settings specifically for all six of the WebGL effects that are available right now. 
now that I have a, another image set up, so again, let's go into the actual WebGL effects themselves. And I'm not gonna go too much and demo out every single one of them, but I will go into the settings individually for each. And thankfully there's only six, but there will be a lot of overlap with a lot of them, specifically noisy track, liquify, ripples to an extent, and RGB orb, slit scan, and RGB split have some similar things as well, but I'll mention that as we get into it. So again, if you do want to add it, it's in the animations and effects. Once you add WebGL effects, you can just choose which ones you want. And all of them have different things that you can customize. I'll highlight them here and probably not go repeat it again <laughs> when they're here. But the pointer size determines exactly how large the cursor is when you are hovering over this. So again, if you see I set it to 10, it effectively covers almost all of this section here. Noise also dictates exactly how noisy it is. So you can see, I'll probably set it here like 0.1. It's incredibly small. I'll, I'll probably have to zoom in so you can see exactly what's actually changing. And especially if I lower the noise, probably down to like 0.9. Again, it's barely mud, so you can kind of see that's on here. Uh, the velocity, let me actually just be, increase this here. And you can see it's kind of how quick does this effect happen. And liquefy kind of has more or less the same. It's also the intensity and the pointer size. Again, if I make the pointer size larger, more of the area is affected. If I change up the intensity, it's exactly how intense this is happening. And again, velocity is very similar. Now, Ripples does autoplay, but you can determine, again, how much it stretches, to what intensity, how noisy it is at each one. And because it is autoplaying, you can decide how fast is it. RGB Orb is kind of cool in that you actually do have a few different options as to what colors do you want. So by default, it does all colors, but this one does have a drop down for green and magenta, red and cyan, blue and yellow. You can just do a set of two colors instead of all three. You can determine which pattern specifically you want. The color angle will just kind of determine, again, kind of that shift. So you can see here, it's a little more like abstract versus if I didn't have much on here, I'll kind of change that this way. Again, pointer size and noise and pointer velocity are similar to before. Just how quick is it happening? And again, to what size and to how intense it is. A slit scan and RGB split do have one option in common, which is a trigger. And this is what I was mentioning before that is kind of interesting in Sukumar's uh, one is you can choose from one of three different options or all three options as well. So you can choose how you want to set this up. You do always need to have at least one something to trigger this effect, but you can choose, do you want a mouse movement? Do you want this to just autoplay? Do you want this to happen on scroll? So as users are scrolling, you can see it's moving and you can determine the direction that this happens, whether it's vertical or horizontal, and then how many duplicates you have, depending on the options that you have, again, autoplay would, you can choose how quickly does it autoplay? And if you have the mouse movement, you can determine the pointer velocity as well and then rgb split has very similar options to everything above because it's almost a combination of everything so you do have the trigger as to whether it scrolls whether you have that mouse movement whether you have the autoplay again some of these might not be available depending which settings you choose or which triggers you choose but again very similarly drop down depending on the colors the channel offset the angles the pointer size noise the pointer velocity and the autoplay speed so with that again that's more or less all of the effects put together. I do want to highlight one thing as well, and it does mention it on here too, when you do go to the animations, that some WebGL effects do require a mouse cursor. It is very specific to mouse cursor and not like a touchscreen device. If the effect that you want to use is probably taking advantage of the mouse cursor like RGB or the noisy track, some of those might not maybe work on a mobile device. You shouldn't have to change it out, but if you do want to be on the safe side or you are worried about accessibility and usability on a mobile device or a touchscreen device like a tablet, you can actually remove this per breakpoint. So you can see I've changed to the tablet breakpoints. Let me remove this animation. Thankfully, this should cascade down. So on mobile, it's not available. But if I come back up to desktop, the RGB split is still there. So if I preview and I can still do it here. If I go to tablet, Again, not available, but the other effects, again, you can see down here are still kind of working. The liquify, the split. So these do work again, technically, if someone was on a smaller breakpoint, but still using a mouse or a cursor. But with that said, I think that's everything in regards to it. Any other questions or anything to follow up, 
feel free to DM me, feel free to reach out to me. If you have anything cool that you kind of create with this, definitely let me know. I'll be happy to share with the team, share with the communities that I'm a part of. But yeah, definitely looking forward to see what everyone creates with this. I know I've already seen quite a few people take advantage of WebGL to create some really cool effects. So I hope you're able to do the same now. But with all that said, thank you so much, everyone, and have a good rest of the day. Bye for now.